Salam e Javano. So let's do the worksheet on work, energy, and power. State the conditions for a system to be in equilibrium. There are two conditions. Number one, the resultant force must be zero. And can you tell me what the second condition is? The second condition is that the resultant torque, what's the other name for torque? must be zero that's right moment resultant moment you could also say that so resultant force and resultant torque must be zero part b figure 3.1 shows an airship in flight the airship is propelled by identical fans and can be angled to control the motion of the airship the up thrust on the airship is ninety three thousand, and the density of the surrounding air is 1.2 kilogram per meter cube now look up thrust, the formula is density of the fluid that has been displaced. So the up thrust on this ship is there because it has moved some air aside. And how much air has it moved aside? That's what the question is asking. And for that, the, the formula is density into volume into gravity. So density of the fluid that has been displaced into volume of the fluid that has been displaced into gravity. So the up thrust is 93,000, which is equals to the density of the fluid, which is 1.2, into the volume of the fluid, into gravity, which is 9.81. So when you divide 93,000 by 1.2 and then by 9.81, you end up getting the volume of the fluid displaced as 7,900 meter cube. Part two, when fluid loaded, the weight of the airship is greater than the up thrust. So when this ship is fully loaded, its weight is more than the up thrust. Then why does it not sink? Up thrust is less. That is because the fans provide you with a force of 3000 Newton, which is upwards. So what is the mass of the airship? So you first need to figure out the equation that links weight, up thrust and F, which is equal to or given by weight is equals to up thrust plus f now your up thrust was 93,000 newtons and the upward force is 3,000 3 into 3 power 3 is 3,000 so you get 96,000 newtons of weight this is basically mg so get the value of m by dividing 96,000 by 9.81 and your answer will be 9785.9 which you can round off to 9,800 kilograms. At a certain time, the airship is stationary. The up thrust force is 2,800 newtons. To produce this force, a mass of 64 kgs of air is propelled through the blades in a time of 0.5 seconds. Assume that the air is stationary at the entrance to the fan. So assuming that the initial speed is zero, what is the change in momentum but look they haven't given you the final speed they've given you the time and they've given you the force and they're asking for the change in momentum change in momentum will be force into time so 2800 into 0 0.5 so 2800 into 0 0.5 gives you a change in momentum of 1400 kilogram meters per second what is the speed of the air as it leaves the fan now you know that the change in momentum can be mv minus mu and the initial speed is zero so 1400 could be equal to the mass of um what should this be the mass of the air that is propelled which is 64 kilograms into the velocity so 1400 divided by 64 and you end up getting your speed as 21.87, which is 22 meters per second. And what is the total kinetic energy of the air? 
due to this one half of mv square you have the mass which is 64 and you have the speed which is 22 so 22 square into 64 divided by 2 you get 15 488 i could write that as 15 500 joules and that is the answer next question a child of weight 330 newton is at point x at the top of a slide the slide is at the edge of a swimming pool fun and it's going to go the child is going to go go up and then naturally he's going to fall off like that the child moves from rest to the lowest point that is a vertical distance four meters below the child continues moving towards point y at the, which is at the end of the slide and vertical distance of 1.1 meter above the kinetic energy of the child at y is 540 joules okay calculate the difference in the gravitational potential energy of the child at points x and y so gravitational potential energy difference would be equal to m g into delta h mg is 330 and what is delta h delta h between these two points is going to be 4 minus 1.1 1 .1. so 330 times 4 minus 1.1 1 .1, and that gives you the difference as 957 joules or you can even write 960 to be honest an average frictional force of 52 newton acts on the child as he moves from x to y by considering energy changes determine the distance moved by the child from x to y now try to understand this they've given you that you were at rest over here correct so what was your kinetic energy your kinetic energy was zero correct but you definitely had a lot of gravitational potential energy so can i can I say this, that the total energy at X was your kinetic energy at X and your gravitational potential at X. Remember, whenever this friction thing comes, always remember this concept, that you have to calculate total energies between the two points and they'll never be equal. Why? Because there's friction. There's work done against friction. There's energy loss. So right now, the total energy at point x would be kinetic energy at x which is zero plus the gravitational potential energy of x i'll let it be like this i won't plug in the values next i will calculate what is the total energy at point y now when i come to point y again i'm coming going back up so i'll have some height and i have some speed so there's be kinetic energy and there will also be some gravitational potential energy now they have said that the kinetic energy is 540 so i'll write 540 plus gravitation potential energy at point y makes sense now try to understand that this first thing was your input this is what you gave in you were at a height that was your input this is your output because you're about to leave the ramp you're done now you're going to go in the water your input and output are not going to be equal why because there is friction and always remember that always input minus output which is equals to input energy minus output energy is equals to energy loss you can also call this as work done against friction okay so input energy is going to be 0 plus GPE X minus output energy is going to be minus 540 minus GPE Y is equals to work done against friction because energy is work so to say work done against friction now what is gpe x minus gpe y what is this thing can you calculate what is this thing gpe x minus GPE? you already calculated it over here that's why i wasn't calculating because you've already figured what the difference is and the difference is between these two 
if I club this together, this is 957. Minus 540 is equals to work against friction. Now, now what do you do? You subtract. What is 957 minus 540? It's going to be 417. So you have 417 is equals to force into distance. And because they've asked you to calculate the distance move and they've told you that the average force acting is 52 newtons, you can easily calculate the distance by doing 417 divided by 52. So divide this by 52 and the distance traveled is 8 meters, 8.0 or 8.1 meters. I hope this makes sense. Part C, the child leaves the slide at point Y, like I told you, the fun starts, and now it's a projectile question. At an angle of 41 degrees, then the path of the child through the air is shown. At point Z, the highest point, point Z is the highest point, and so at the highest point, you know that the vertical velocity will become zero. The question that they're asking you, calculate the speed of the child at point Y. The vertical velocity has become zero, not the horizontal. Now, the question is, do we know the speed of the child at point Y? We have the kinetic energy. So can I calculate the speed? Kinetic energy is half mv square. I know that my kinetic energy was 540. So that should be equal to one half of m. Now the mass of the child have they've given us the weight, so we need to convert it into mass. So 330 divided by 9.81 into v square. And from here I can calculate my speed. I'm gonna do it. It's 540 into 2 into 9.81. Divide by 330 and take the square root of this. And my speed turns out to be 5.66. I'm going to write 5.7 meters per second. At point Z, now this is this speed. This speed, the speed with which you launch. Now, na naturally, you know that when you're in a projectile, it has two components. One is the horizontal and one is the vertical. Now, at the highest point, the only component that remains is the horizontal component. So at point Z, the horizontal speed will be 5.7 cos 41. And when you do 5.7 cos 41, you're going to end up getting 4.3 meters per second as your answer. And the third question, define power. Power is, you can write down the formula, work done per unit time. A car of mass, 1700 kilogram, moves in a straight line along a slope that is at an angle theta to the horizontal. The car moves at a constant velocity for 25 meters, for a distance of 25 meters from A to B. Air resistance and friction provided provide a total resistive force of 440. So there's a downward frictional force of 440 newtons, which opposes the motion, so it's down the slope. For the movement of the car from A to B, what is the change in the kinetic energy? Are you moving at constant speed? Look, constant speed. So what should be your change? Your change in kinetic energy should be zero because your final speed and initial speed are the same. So I'm going to write zero. Calculate the work done against the, to uh, against the total resistive force. So work done against resistive force would be the resistive force into the distance. Resistive force is 440, distance is 25. So you do 440 and 25 and your answer is 11,000 joules. The movement of the car in A to B causes its gravitational potential energy to increase by this amount. Calculate the increase in the height. So there's a change in your gravitational potential energy, which is definitely linked to a change in height. So the gravitational potential energy increases by this amount. So the movement causes gravitational potential energy to increase by. So this is the change in gravitational potential energy. So 4.8 10 to the power 4 is equals to mg. Now, do we have the mass? Yeah, we do 1700. So 1700 into 9.81 into change in height, and you calculate the change in height. So 4.8 tenths per 4 
divided by 1700 into 9.81 and the answer that i end up getting for the change in height is 2.87 or 2.9 meters next calculate the angle theta you have to calculate this angle theta at which this is inclined so to calculate the angle i have this length with me which is 25 i also have this height over here so can i use a ratio sine theta sine theta is perpendicular over hypotenuse so sine theta is perpendicular was the height which was 2.9 divided by the hypotenuse which was 25 so 2.9 over 25 and sine inverse of 2.9 over 25 and the answer that i get for this is 6.66 which is 6.7 degrees part d the engine of the car produces an output power of 1.7 10 to the power 4 and this kind of feeds back to the formula for power which is power is work done per unit time now the power that you're producing is 1.7 in 10 to the power 4 what work have you done you've gained height so you've gained gravitational potential energy which is this 4.8 10 to the power 4 did you gain any kinetic energy nope did you do any work against friction yes what was your work done against friction 11000 remember that this all has been done by the car so the car produces an output power of 1.7 10 to the power 4 and it does what it makes you gain gravitational potential energy there's no kinetic energy gain because the speed was constant but there was work done against friction which was 11000 so you add the change in gravitational potential energy if there was any kinetic energy i would have put that here and i've also added my energy losses because this is the total work done by the engine of the car divided by the time taken so the time taken is going to be 4.8 into 10 to the power 4 plus 11000 divided by 1.7 in 10 to the power 4 and the time that i'm getting is 3.47 which is like 3.5 seconds lovely this worksheet is finished